Guitar is still kind of my main instrument. It's the one that I can actually play uh, to some degree. So is it a, a hidden dirty secret that you're, you're really a guitarist? Uh, yeah, apparently. I mean, I have actually played some guitar at, at one of the EMOMs in Derby. Um, I did a sort of ambient guitar set at that. Ah, uh, any yeah. chance you might do that tonight? No. <laughs> ah. No, it's, uh, it's all the electronics. You said that very quickly, yeah. Jim. Isn't it? <laughs> that, 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 I'm not. I'm not no, I used to play that thing for hours every day. You know? Is the denim shirt a nod to that hairy <laughs> Maybe, maybe. I was like 15 and a half when I first started gigging. So, And that uh, that's kind of where I got the bug for playing live. Um, but yeah, and then sort of probably age 18, 17, 18, um, I started getting into electronic music um, and had a Commodore Amiga. So, you know, like so many people, I started off... Uh, with MED, not even Octomed, but MED. It only had four tracks, a little MIDI interface, and uh, and yeah, I was away, you know, buying drum machines and little synths and stuff. So we used to play out live a lot, and we used to go on stage wearing these insect heads. Um, so it was like three of us wearing these these insect heads that had flashing LEDs in the antenna. And we were called Outsect, and uh, yeah, we used to sort of play, you know, fairly big gigs and raves and stuff, and you know, uh, we went. I think the pinnacle was uh, we played Sheffield Octagon, which obviously you know from Synthfest, um, supporting Cole Cox there. That was uh, pretty good. Cool. Uh, massive PA system and lasers and everything. That was uh, that was great fun. So what happened to that band? Um, well, we we set up a, a record label with some lottery funding um, and you know released you know a handful of EPs. Um, one of which. It's, it's worth it's worth a lot of money now mainly because i think i took most of them to the tip um it's quite rare it's quite sought after on discogs um but yeah so uh yeah so we did that and you then probably gave your your friends and relatives copies so maybe you could yeah ask them nicely hey we still got that thing knocking around yeah i actually got one copy back off my mum and it's unplayed it's absolutely virgin unplayed vinyl and uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's good <laughs> that it's unplayed, but yeah. bad that she never played it. <laughs> she didn't have a record that. So, all oh, right, that's fair enough. <laughs> and yeah, sort of life just kind of got in the way, and that everything sort of got put on the back burner uh, for a while. Um, and then, you know, I've, I've ended up sort of doing solo stuff um, over the past few years, um, and. More recently, yeah, playing live solo stuff, which I, I'd never done before. So have you got a set number of songs which are crafted and you know exactly how they're going to go and the structure of it is kind of bolted down? <clears throat> no, my, my stuff is, is quite fluid. I have, have general sort of themes that I know work in terms of arrangements. Um, but literally, I, I don't use any song modes in what I do. Everything is... All the arrangements are built from scratch on the night so i only use pattern modes and, and mutes and you know sort of manipulation of, of sounds so anything can happen and it often does and sometimes i will press the wrong button one that i didn't intend to and i'm like oh right i'm going here now you know and that changes the arrangement completely because then I've, I've got to figure out how to then take it from that point um but i like that and i love the fact that you know I, I use this word quite a lot when I talk about playing live. It's like the amount of jeopardy in what I do. And the most boring thing for me would be to to rock up and press play and just let it play. I would be bored out of my mind if that was, you know, what I did. And thankfully, it's it's the opposite of that. It's like lots and lots of button pushes and trying to figure out and just going with the flow and the moment and trying other stuff out. And yeah, and some of it works, some of it doesn't. And so I tend to sort of um, try and recreate what has worked in the past. And so I have general themes in, in my arrangements that I, I will sort of know, you know, what I can bring this in here like this. But everything is like, there's no song modes. I mean, there's only, I think, there's only one track in my entire repertoire that um, has actually got more than one pattern in it. Um, but yeah, the rest is all just a single pattern. And uh, and just bringing stuff in and out but i love that though because it's it keeps it fresh and keeps it exciting for me 
so I don't get bored because I don't want to get bored performing and you know people don't want to see someone who's bored on stage so hey hello everybody back again so uh, now we've got James Glue who those of you who are maybe fans of this whole kind of emon music uh, movement which is well, we should, we've got to give a shout out to Martin Christie because he's the guy who kind of came up with the idea of these sort of short sets and uh, a, a, an easier target to, to aim for for people who perhaps haven't got a full thing. Jim actually is not that guy because he's got loads of music he could play. Sadly, we only had a spot for 15 minutes, but what a 15 minutes it's going to be. So thank you very much, Jim. Take it away. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you.